Hey, what's happening out there, YouTube? This is Carlos CNL Small Engine Repair and Lawn Care. How y'all doing today? Today is Black Friday, and I didn't go to shop. I went to the shop. I ain't dealing with Black Friday and all that. I'm just not, no, not going to do it. So, I mean, I know other people go, and if that's your thing, hey, go right ahead, but I'm not into that. Um, uh, so, anyway... <laughs> Let you know what I'm doing on Black Friday. I was going to come to the shop yesterday and do a few things. I have got this place in, uh, looks like a bomb went off in it. I mean, it's terrible. Um, but the reason being is it's not that I'm being, you know, sloppy with my shop. It's just um, sloppy, shoppy, That's slop shop. Hey, there you go. But anyway, just being stupid. Um, I'm re I am had to condense some of my toolboxes down. I'm making some uh, room in this shop, making some more room. I have outgrown this shop, this building, and I think it's a 12 by 20, and I'm just, I mean, I've, I'm, you know, we're looking at possibly building a 40 by 40 or a 40 by 60 uh, with concrete floor and, you know, bay doors on both ends and a chained in uh, lean-to on one side to put all the stuff that's been fixed and all that, so... I don't know yet. I mean, I'm trying to do this, guys, uh, and that's one reason I'm making this video. How much does it cost to start a small engine repair shop? Well, I'm trying to do all this without going into debt. So it's going to take me a little bit longer than somebody that's either got a lot of money or don't care to go in debt. My advice is don't go in debt for this, I'm telling you. I mean, a couple grand or something maybe, but I mean, when you start talking about a 40 by 40 building and getting power run to it and plumbing and all this other stuff, you know, you're you're looking $20,000 and I'm not going to invest $20,000. Well, it's not that I wouldn't invest $20,000, let me rephrase that. I wouldn't go borrow $20,000. I'm going to wait until I know that I can pay for this. Uh, I know I can pay for it, but I mean pay for it out of my pocket. It's a good business, guys. You can make some good money doing it. Uh, and that brings me to... Uh, the reason for the video is um, how, you know, people have sent me messages. How much does it cost to start a small engine repair shop? I can't really give you an exact dollar amount, but I will tell you this. This is some of the things you need. First, you're going to need a building. you got to have somewhere to work, guys. Now, I know a guy that started off with two canvas carports, and I don't even think you would really have to have two, but he did. And he just split it, put them both back, you know, back to back. To where the the openings were on each end he split it and then just pins that back um to hold it back you know so that he can get put the lawn mowers in one end then they travel all the way through right out the other side which is a pretty good plan but there's a lot of back work involved when you're pushing those lawn mowers that won't start across gravel and all that which i mean it happens um but he bought those i think for like he said either a hundred or two hundred dollars a piece something like that so that's what he's working out of, and he's making money. I mean, he's making money. I know he's making money. Um, all right, and uh, you'll need some tools. If you're looking to get into small engine repair, I figure you're pretty handy. You've already got at least a basic set of tools. You don't need nothing crazy, man. Most of this stuff, uh, you're going to have to make special tools, specialty tools to begin with. Um, Terrell fixes all. <coughs> Uh, I've been a little sick, guys. Um, Terrell Fixes All has two really good videos on um, uh, the tools that every small engine mechanic should have or something like that. But it's a two-part series, and he goes over a lot of tools and how he made some of the tools that he's got. And it's pretty good, and I'm sure if you're watching me, you've seen Terrell Fixes All, so... Go and check those videos out as far as your tools. Now, what I do is all the stuff, like I know it's getting ready to be Christmas time. You guys are going to be assembling something. Uh, if it's a grill or whatever, they all come with them little wrenches and Allen wrenches. Keep that stuff, man. Um, I've got a wrench. It's sort of like, well, it's sort of like this. It's just like one of them little wrenches that come in the kit. But it's got an open end on one of It's open end, open end wrenches. Um, and it fits perfect to take the um, anti-backfire valve off a Briggs & Stratton engine. Because, see, that, that gap is so narrow, a lot of guys will have to take, for instance, and, and grind a wrench down on either side to get it to fit in there. Well, I don't even go, and go grind it on my wrenches. I mean, if I was going to grind on a wrench, I'd go to Walmart and buy me a cheapy wrench. You don't have to have Snap-on. You don't have to have Mac. 
S and K. You don't have to have all that kind of stuff, guys. All you need is a good basic set of hand tools, you know, a mechanic set. You know, I think I seen a 300-piece set at Lowe's or something the other day, and that's basically all you would need to start off. Now, you are going to have to make some stuff. You're going to have to have your lift of some kind unless you just want to waller around on the ground, which you're still going to be on the ground even with a lift, but it won't be as bad. I've got a um, 500 pound capacity um, lawnmower lift, lawnmower ATV. You just roll two two wheels up in the front of it, jack it up with your foot, and it's got the locks and all that as it goes up. It's, it's really handy when you're doing uh, blade work and belt work and stuff up underneath it, taking the engines off and stuff like that. It, it helps a lot. Um, but so you, you're going to need a, you're going to need a building. You need somewhere to work. You're going to need some tools to be able to work on this stuff. Um, actually, as far as building, I know a guy that's got a mobile service, man. And what he does is goes to the customer's house. Now, I don't know if I would do, I'm not into that, but it works for him. You know what I'm saying? It works for him. He's got a, like one of them 10 by 10 sport tarps, you know, you stick up. And he's got two little things that, so he's in the shade when it's real hot. And he's out there in the lawn in their garage or whatever working on it. It's actually not a bad gig, man, when you think about it. Um, but uh, it's just a lot of traveling, running back and forth all the time. I just don't want to do that. But uh, you can do that. Um, two, you're going to have to have a business license eventually. Now, the first two or three months I was open when I was part-time, I didn't even worry about a business license. I was just putting my fillers out there a little bit, you know. Um, but you're going to need a business license because, uh, without a business license, you cannot become a parts dealer. You cannot open a bank account with a separate, uh, you know, with your company name under your company name and things like that. So guys, it can get a little tricky. Um, you know, customers don't want to come in when they pay. Can you take a check? Oh, sure. I can take a check. Just write it out to me or cash. They don't like that kind of stuff, guys. I'm here to tell you. I mean, some of them don't care. A lot of it's cash, but you always got those ones, man, especially if you're dealing with another business. If you're dealing with another business, you can forget it. He ain't going to, he ain't, probably ain't going to pay you cash. He's got to keep track of his records and stuff too. He's wanting to pay you with a check or a credit card. Now, when it comes to cards, I use Square, which is free. You can go buy the little white Square chip reader thing, the swiper at Walmart for like six bucks and put the, it's a free app. Put it on your phone. Uh, and that's what I use a lot of times my phone where I do the lawn care too. You know, I've always got it with me. So customer wants to pay the credit card, just swipe it and it's done. Now square does charge you 2.75%. So keep that in mind. The reason that you need a business license again is for your insurance guys, whatever you do, man, don't take on no big jobs without no insurance. Just don't do it. I mean, insurance ain't that high. You know, I pay $180 every three months. That's $10,000 coverage of anything that I tear up in the shop. If the shop burns down, um, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, if you put a blade on and it goes back to the customer's house and he throws a blade off, you, know, you didn't tighten the, the bolt up on the spindle enough and it goes through the side of his brand new Mercedes, you better have some money. <laughs> you want some insurance. I've got a million dollars on personal injury. And so 10000 on anything, any contents, a million dollars on personal injury or uh, tear up somebody's house. And basically, I got it too for the lawn care. In case, you know, you're, some dude leaves a golf ball laying in the yard and you shoot a golf ball through his window and ping granny in the head or something with it. You never know. Or his prize bulldog, you know, binged him in the head with a golf ball or a rock or whatever. But anyway, uh, definitely have you some insurance, guys. Um what else am I leaving out? That way you can become a dealer. Briggs and Stratton, you want to call Power Distributors. Just Google Power Distributors. It'll come up. Call them. They will walk you through. It's super simple, guys. Super simple. $250 parts order. Unless it went up. When I got into it, it was $250. $250 on your first order. Guys, it does not take long when you're ordering oil. They'll send you these <clears throat> this sheet over or internet and you can print it off. Go through and make your parts order. And again, go out to where your big box stores are. Look at the mowers and see what is on them. Kohler's, 
or br on your Briggs. Like if you call power distributors, it's going to be Briggs. But you want to look at what sizes they are and stuff like that. What kind of air filters they got. What kind of oil filters they run. It. Shoot, whip you out a little notepad and write them numbers down. Because the number will be on the side of it. And order you some of them. Because see, the guys who buy the new mowers and stuff, the next year, they're going to want that thing serviced. They're going to bring it in because they got, you know, $2,000 in this lawnmower. And if they've got any sense at all, they get the oil changed and everything in that every year. So pay attention to that and you'll have those and you can stock those out of that first 250 bucks. And within two weeks, three weeks, you should have that money back. I mean, that shouldn't be a problem. Uh, Kohler, I think, I think is, well, I know it's Gardner Distributors. Um... They're your Kohler guys and MTD and stuff like that. And I think they're $500. But let me tell you something about being a dealer. When you're a dealer, you're just not buying Kohler parts and Briggs parts, okay? You can buy Gates belts, uh, organ blades, uh, car, uh, Carlisle tires, um, Walbro carburetors, um, Nikki carbs. I mean, you can go through, you can get... Just about anything that you need, if you go through Gardner or Power Distributors or both or both of them, you can get all kind of stuff. Oils, air filters, oil filters, spark plugs, belts, blades, bearings, spindles, spindle shafts. I mean, you can get all kinds of stuff through them, but <clears throat> this is the thing. If you don't put, now this is just with Briggs, okay? This is just power distributors. You got to put in a $200 order every time or you pay $12 to $15 shipping. So if you just, if a guy comes in and says, hey man, I want a recoil spring for my weed eater. Or, and you go, oh, okay. and or, or I want it for my tiller. And you look on Briggs' site, on, on power distributor site and say it's, I don't know, let's say 10 bucks. I don't know what they cost exactly, but say 10 bucks. And you got to pay 12 bucks to get that in. Now you're looking, you're paying $22. You got to pass that on to the customer. This is when a lot of guys jump over and order it off Amazon. Because if you're a Prime member, you get free two day shipping and you don't pay that extra shipping cost. What I try to do, and I've done that when I first started out. Now, you will learn when you're dealing with carburetors and things like that who to buy what company, what brand off Amazon to order carburetors from. Because let me tell you something, guys. Some of that stuff on Amazon is straight out and out junk. I mean, I won't put it on. I'm just, where I do Kohler and stuff now, I mean, now, and there's a shop in Beckley, a bigger shop than me, a big dealer, and he does all the Honda and Kawasaki and stuff like that. So, I mean, you know, I take my tax exempt form to him on file down there, and I mean, we're cool, you know what I mean? And I have to buy parts off him sometimes. Is he marking the parts up? Well, absolutely he is. I know he is. But he leaves me a little bit of meat on the bone where I can mark it up too. That's the way this business works. I'm telling you guys. Um, if you're a real soft-hearted guy and be like, okay, guys, I'll, you know, let your wife handle the money. Because the way I am, you know, I've traded my services for, <laughs> I always hate that. Green beans, canned green beans, couple dozen eggs, you know. I'm serious, guys. I mean, I'm just that way. Then I go home, my wife's like, you know, that is if I don't have to put no parts in it, if it's just labor, you know. And I come home and I have, like, one time I had six quarts of uh, half runners, green green bean canned half runners. She's like, where did you get these? And I said, well, Mr. So-and-so. And she's like, so you didn't get paid. And I'm like, yeah, I got paid. I got six quarts of canned green beans and, and five pounds of new potatoes. You know, <laughs> she was upset, let me tell you, because I only had a couple, about an hour in the in the machine, you know, it's just cleaning out a carburetor and stuff, it wasn't no big deal, but if it, she's more about the money, so I let her handle a lot of the money part of it, because I get took, you know, I'm just that way, but anyway, um, so you need to be a, a dealer, and you can't do that without having a business license. On your business license, do the LLC right off the bat. I done sole proprietorship at first. There's no difference in your taxes between a sole proprietorship and a LLC. IRS is going to hit you the same no matter what. Um, the LLC is limited liability. 
limited liability. That way, if you do get sued, all they can do is take your building. They can take your tools. They can take anything that is under the company blanket, under the company name, they can take. So, you know what I'm saying? And they'll go back, and if you've deducted on your taxes, if you've depreciated your building, uh, a vehicle, yeah, a vehicle or anything like that, if you're trying to dep depreciate your personal vehicle on your business taxes, and you get sued, they can take your vehicle. So remember, that's why I, that I went out and bought a van. I, I bought a box van. Well, I do the lawn care and stuff too, though. I mean, I get it. And I sold an old restored 76 CJ5 Jeep, which I probably said that in other videos, to have the money to do that. But I bought that old van. It's got 251,000 miles on it. But it still runs good. It gets me where I'm going. So, uh, and I depreciate it, you know, every year um, for five years or so. But I ain't going to get into tax stuff. I just got it on my mind. It's that time of year. Um, so, guys, you know, bottom line is this. When you get into <clears throat> starting a small engine repair, you need a place to work. You need some tools. You need a business license. You need some insurance. You need your own uh, business account at the bank. And you're going to need some customers, which brings me to a guy I want to give a shout out to. He actually sent me a message. And see, guys, I like to hear this kind of stuff. He sent me a message and said, hey, man, I just started a small engine repair and you helped me a lot. Thank you and all that. My channel's not monetized, guys. If you notice, there's no commercials on this one. I ain't big enough. Uh, and um, so um, they're not even going to look at me, you know what I'm saying, as far as that kind of stuff goes. Uh, but I don't do it for the money. I do it to help other people out because I made a lot of mistakes when I first started. And this guy's name is Roger. He just opened Roger's lawnmower repair in cookville tennessee so if you're around cookville tennessee go see roger and i believe he'll do you right he seems sounds like a pretty good guy i don't know him personally i don't know what kind of work he does but anyway guys go give him a try man listen this guy you know you guys that own these um uh, lawn care businesses it's good to get in with your small engine repair guy when he's small when he's just starting out because once he gets big, he don't care. And I'm just being honest with you. He's just like, line it up, put it in line. If you're number 200 out there or 150 or 50, there's where you're at. But you get in with a guy, and this is the kind of guy I am. You support me when I'm growing, I'll support you when you're growing, you see. So what you want to do is, is go to this guy, Roger, if you're around Cook, I don't even know where Cookville, Tennessee is. But go around Cookville, Tennessee, give him your business. And this is how I do things. If I've got a guy that comes in here, you know, a lawn care business, and even though he's he might be doing the same business I'm in, in the same neighborhood, I don't care. You know what I mean? This ain't about competition, guys. Um, but what I do is I know if that guy's trying to feed his family with that mower, I'm going to move him up. As soon as I can, I'm going to get his mower in there over top of things that, you know, other things. You know, if I know if a guy comes in and says, well, I got two mowers, I just want this one checked out. And I got a guy that comes in here that's trying to feed his family on one. Well, the guy that's trying to feed his family, that's who's coming in here first. That's just the way it is. So go see Roger at Roger's Lawn Mower Repair in Cookville, Tennessee. And uh, guys, oh, one more thing before I get off here. Create you a website. So if Roger's out there, I don't know whether he's got a website or not, and link it to your free Google. You can go on Google. It's free. Set up your business and put ads out there on Google. Uh, so when people Google um, lawnmower repair in Cookville, Tennessee, bam, your name comes up there and your phone number. And it'll even have a link down there if you want to put in a website. Now, on my website, all i done, it cost me like $15 a month. I designed it myself through Vistaprint. Is it pretty? It's okay. Is it great? No. No. I, I just said I did it. Okay. I'm not a computer guy. And it took me about four hours to do it, to download all the pictures into it and all that. And you can go on and you can look up C&L, small engine repair, uh, in West Virginia. And there will be my, my website if you want to go look at it. But Anyway, and, and copy it. Shoot, I don't care. However, I don't care about none of that. It's just your customers get to see what you do and the work that you do. 
uh, anyway, guys, listen, I've got to get off here, man. I've almost took up 20 minutes of your time today, and I've got to get back to work myself. So, listen, CNL is out, and as I always uh, close all my videos and things like that with, no matter what you do, do it for the glory of God, or it ain't worth doing, because without Him, there ain't none of this possible. Until next time, CNL is out.